Hey, what is the crack, guys? It's me, the Minion of Minecraft Service Gamers. That's my gamer tag. Stick yours in the comments. We will have a duel. Also, it'd be great if you could like and subscribe. Really helps the video get seen, guys. That's right, I am back with another top three replays. This time it's my fusion event, Dark Magician. It's really good deck, lots of fun. Breezing through the fusion event with it and just, just breaking boards and OTK in left, right, and center. Now, because of the stuff in here, like your super polys and whatnot, it is more of a going second deck, and I thought I'd never see that in a proper Dark Magician build, but this one is, you know, you want to set your, your traps. See what your opponent is capable of, and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, your super poly is even alive. But it's the fusion event, so it more than likely will be. I did try super poly in a build before, but you know, when you're climbing the rank ladder, you never know if you're going to come up against someone who's actually running viable targets for your super polys. So a lot of the times, it can end up as a dead card in your hand. Now I was kind of fortunate; I was up against uh, a kind of fossil dino deck. Uh, so I do know that he did have dark monsters I could use as, you know, material for one of my monsters. But at the moment all he was running was Earth, and it wasn't really fitting into what I had planned. But that's okay, you know, I, I still had other avenues to go about. So I wait until he attacks. Obviously I activate my face down Eternal Soul, get my Dark Magician on the field as a 2-5 body, and protect my life points. That should buy me another turn. Generally, you're better off waiting to do this in the battle phase, because then you can't like use some sort of spot removal, try and get rid of it. Uh, obviously, well, you can't, I suppose, with Eternal Soul. The best way to do it would be to beat over Dark Magician, because he's protected from your opponent's card effects with Eternal Soul. So, either way, I activate my card, and I uh, put uh, Magician Souls top of the deck, so I know straight away what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Dark Magician. Uh, Dark Magician Girl, and then I get that nice sweet draw 2, which is going to be very hard to get in the TCG at the moment, seeing as they just banned Verte and Aconda. But you know what? Dark Magician is what it is. Magician Souls really is just one of those great cards in the deck. I mean, it's nearly always just a, you know a free summon of a good bodied monster, whether it be Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl, or you can, of course, special summon himself send a card that's dead in your hand around the field whether it be super poly or something and you get that free draw so he is just he's just an all-round great card so i can't wait to have ioc in this game but either way we draw into our uh, dark magical circle which is you know really going to help with our uh, eternal soul setup but either way i uh, you know set the cards on top of my deck because let's be honest how often the circle really hit not very often. If you're playing circle and more than two, go and get a cat scan because something's not right with you. There's no need to ever play more than two of it. I currently play one because that is really all you need. It's heavily searchable. It's a card you don't want to see multiples of. You certainly don't want to be activating it and then adding another circle to hand because it's only once per turn. So it's, it's sort of pointless at any more than two. Two would be the maximum you should ever play of that card. If someone says tree, don't listen to them. They're selling your snake oil, mate. But either way, I sent Apprentice, get that extra bit of damage with Dark Magician, because I'm going for the throat here. And now I've got another t attack, 1000 off his life points. I use my Super Poly on my own monsters, because, you know, why not? It's still the battle phase. I can go for the Dark Magicians, get a bit, extra, bit of extra damage on board, and I still have the the special summon of eternal soul so this is game right here you know that's why i love secrets of dark magic as well you can activate these cards in the battle phase go into your big monster and look it's game moving swiftly along into the second game i've chosen for my top three replays and this is actually a pretty solid hand i mean i've got the max c if they start comboing off i've got the ghost dog in case they go for something like hulk and i can just you know spot destroy something on the field so, it's grand, but I didn't need either of those because they just set one and end the turn. Made me a little bit suspicious. You know, keeping your opponent on, on their toes as to not knowing what deck you're playing can be essential at times, because then they don't really know what to prepare for. Either way, I just did my thing, as I usually do, go with the normal summon of Rod, he will add a card to hand. In this instance, I chose to go for Secrets Dark Magic, just so I can unbrick my hand and get that Dark Magician girl out of there. Uh, but like I was saying in the previous replay, Secrets of Dark Magic is just a really good 
quick play spell. If you're running uh, rituals, you can get your rituals out. You know, if you're running the the correct dark magician fusions, it's just great for unbreaking your hand. So you go dark magician girl and any other spellcaster, and bada bing bada boom, you've got yourself the dark magicians. Dark Magician is another good card in its own right because it can genu generate a lot of advantage for you and it's got a nice floating effect if he's destroyed you special summon out Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl so good way of getting two bodies on the field if you need to uh, either way we got our Dark Magicians on the field time to go for that quick strike boom already have this guy well under half his life points this game is in full control to the minion Go main phase 2, set your eternal soul, and bada bing bada boom, you're laughing. Your move jump. Now in the fusion event you are seeing a lot of the same decks. You know, it's it's basically just Despia everywhere. And although Despia is a tough deck, it's not unbeatable, especially when you're running stuff like Super Poly. So I was still kinda himming and han, what sort of deck am I up against? Oh, marvellous, it's a mirror match. So, guy goes straight into Magician's Souls, you know, I activate uh, Max C, just, you know, might as well get that extra draw out of it, but he had other plans, uses Call Boy, gets rid of my Max C. This is why Call Boy the Grave is one of the best quick plays in the game, and it shouldn't be at one in the TCG. I firmly believe, just like in Master Jewel, Call Boy the Grave should be at two. Uh, but that's besides the point, he goes for his Dark Magician, I'm able to get a nice handy draw of it. Nice, draw into Effect Failure, a card that can be very useful if he goes for his normal summon. But he doesn't, he goes straight for Eye of Tim, so I already know what sort of build this guy's running. You're running an Eye of Tim build? Yeah, he goes into Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight. Not going to help him right now because he doesn't seem to have any back row. Now Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight is really at its best when it's protecting something like Eternal Soul and you know you have your circle set up but you know he has enough 200 extra attack points on me so he is able to beat over my dark magicians that allows me to use their floating effect go into dark magician and dark magician girl and that will give me a play for next turn at least so what's he gonna do he's gonna set a ton of back row Ooh, doesn't seem so looks like he's just ending phase well, there really would have been better cards to go into than Dark Magician the Dragon Knight in that instance. Maybe he's not running Dark Cavalry, who knows. But either way, I draw in top deck a great card, Soul Servant. fan freaking tastic I can set anything I want here. You know, I, I've got a few options. I also have uh, Eternal Soul, so I can get back to Dark Magician after I send him away. Um, have another look at the board. What do I go for? So another great thing about Soul Servant is you can you know stack any card on the top of your deck, albeit if it's in the graveyard. So I chose to stack Secrets of Dark Magic. Then I banish Soul Servant from the graveyard. I get that sweet draw too. Activate Circle, and this guy knows exactly where this duel is going, and he just tags out right there and then. And the final replay with my Dark Magician Fusion deck, of course, it has to be the DPE mirror match <laughs> you know it was gonna happen eventually so we're a couple of turns in just to kind of exploit things a bit but yeah it's your typical setup he got Phoenix Enforcer on his first turn and just started systematically taking out all my cards so I had to step as much as I could to hopefully get him to avoid hitting the cards I, I want to keep on the field uh, and that allowed me to then buy time and draw into Fusion Destiny. Fusion Destiny, great card. Really, really good. I mean, it, it dumps the materials straight from the deck into the graveyard, and it's not even like they're bad materials, like when it comes to Red Eyes Fusion and Dragoon. It's like, at least Phoenix Enforcer has some decent materials. You know, you can get that extra special summon off Dasher. You can then banish Dasher and Celestial for a draw two, your hand is empty. I mean, there's just so much utility in Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. And when it comes down to these sort of mirror matchups, when you've got your Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer against Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer, it's going to be uh, a game of cat and mouse. It's whoever's going to force out his effect first, and then you kind of see where you go from there. Because you never really want to be Chain Link 1 
activating his effect, you're always going to be wanting to be using it on the chaining too, and just take more control of the game. Um, and a lot of people overlook his, you know, ability to decrease your opponent's monsters by the amount of heroes in your graveyard. Like in hero decks, I'd say that's well powerful. But even that extra 400 after attack can make the difference sometimes. Either way, it doesn't help me here. He still hired my attack. I had to just use DP's effect to destroy his blue eyes and avoid getting punished next turn. He of course activates Dasher in Graveyard, gets him that extra special summon, and he gets his white stone on the field. Starting to look like a bit of a problem for me, I mean now he's going to get Destroy Phoenix Enforcer back out, he doesn't have to destroy TP anymore with his own effect, he can now destroy the tuner and get the effect off from there. But you know, these games can be hard, you just have to use DPE correctly. Watch what they're doing, try and eliminate any sort of advantage they're going to get with his effect and make sure they're constantly destroying him with the effect and not other cards so that he doesn't stay on the field. And in typical DPE mirror match face-offs, it's just going to be back and forth. I activate DPE, oh, well I activate DPE in response. He nails my eternal soul, not the end of the world. It wasn't face up, I didn't have any monsters to be destroyed by it. So it was okay, I didn't mind losing Eternal Soul in this way. It did hurt me a little though, because I do like Eternal Soul. It's, it's great for giving you advantage, getting that special summon every turn. Uh, if you're running cards that you can search from your deck, like Dark Magic Attack. It's, it's also super, you know, it's just basic free back row removal, because you're going to have that Dark Magician on the field so often. But, either way, he gets his monster on the field. I was like, you know what, do I use Destiny Hero Dasher here? It's a free body on the field? Yeah, why not? Go on. You know, I might not get many more chances to use it if I end up banishing from the graveyard with Celestial. So, yeah, it's it's one of those things. If you have the opportunity, just use Dasher's effect because it, it's, it's a free body. Simple as. So, the DPEs return in usual fashion. Debating whether to use his effect now maybe try and bait out my opponent's move first so I'm like yeah you know what that's what I'll do I'll tribute summon effect failure get my dark magician girl on the field maybe elicit some sort of response from my opponent no okay so he, he knows oh no he should have known that dark magician girl was no actual threat to him and maybe hold off a bit but he doesn't do that he decides to, to just shotgun it well sorry about that buddy I'm gonna do it too. And yeah, we were mutually assured destruction. We both took out each other's cards because that's what DPE does. It's just constant back and forth. You activate him? Oh no, well I'll activate him. How dare you activate him? I'm activating him. It's it's the same thing over and over again. But in a grind game, he's really good, he just keeps taking out stuff. And like I was saying with these materials in the graveyard, super, super move to just banish Celestial, get that draw too. Uh, I've also got Soul Servant in the graveyard, so bada bing, another draw too. I mean, I oh know, sorry, I've only got one Dark Magician Girl in the graveyard. That's that's why I only got to draw one. Not to worry, not to worry. Activate my uh, Magicalized Fusion. It's gonna have to banish my Dark Magician Girl. I don't like doing this because now my future draws of Soul Servant will only be a draw one, but it's a chance I was willing to take just to get that 2-8 body on the field start smacking this guy's life points a bit take control of this duel like a lot of people say that DP is like overpowered and he's in every deck you know, okay yeah I agree with the latter he is in every deck but I don't know about being overpowered uh, I mean yes he destroys a card basically every turn for free and then comes back but there's a lot more outs to DP than there is to Dragoon. Uh, I, I will concede that fact there. And in the sense of like DP versus Dragoon, Dragoon has destruction protection. A lot of cards have destruction protection or some sort of floating effect. So, you know, sometimes just simply destroying a card doesn't solve all your problems. Uh, who would have known? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, from this point on, if he destroys by Dark Magicians, I get two free bodies out of it. So, he knows now he has to destroy other cards, it would just be a, a waste of time and effort. Oh, here we go, Harpy's Feather Duster. 
every single time. Well, you know what, chump? Super Polly. I'm not going to let Super Polly go out like that. I'm at least going to bloody activate it. Use my Dark Magicians and use his DP. DP gone. I mean, in a Super Polly heavy format, DP is just not as strong as you think he is. It's so easy just to supply that one extra Dark Monster and just get rid of DP. Summon something like Predoprant Draco Stepelia. <coughs> and Draco Stepelia is a monster to gain in its own right. And I've retained my DP. His DP was sent as material for Super Poly, so he ain't coming back, I'm afraid. And this is this is game. I mean, I don't even have to summon anything. I've got 2-5, I've got 2-7. This game is wrapped up, done and dusted. And I did it with relative ease, although I was worried a little bit for a while. But what do you think of this deck, guys? How are you enjoying the fusion event? Let me know how you got on in it, and I'll see you next time.